About three things I was absolutely positive. First, Edward was a vampire. A second, there was a part of him, and I didn't know how dominant that part might be, that thirsted for my blood. And third, I was unconditionally and irrevocably in love with him. June 2nd, 2003. I know the exact day that I woke up from my dream and started writing. I know what I saw. Mm, what exactly was that? You know, for me, it was so personal. I was surprised that people responded to it so well. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the creator and author of the beloved series, Stephanie Meyer. I got the idea for Twilight from a dream, and it sounds kind of cheesy, but it was a great dream. The meadow scene in the novel is basically the dream that I had, and when I woke up, I wanted to know what would happen to them next. You know, how would they work out this situation? I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. I trust you. I was afraid of forgetting the dream because it was so good. I sat down to write it out. And so that first day I wrote 10 pages and pretty much all of chapter 13. And then after that, I just wanted to know what was going to happen. So I never sat down to write a novel. It was just a chance to kind of play with the characters in my head. And when I finished it, no one was more shocked than me that I'd actually finished a book. <laughs> it came very suddenly and unexpectedly. Marker. When I was writing the novel, I saw the whole thing in my head like a movie. It was a very visual experience, and so I really wanted to see it brought to life. That's how you kill vampires. There is a great deal of pressure knowing how important this is to the fans, how personally they take it. We tried to figure out how do you condense all those beautiful pages down into this one moving script and how do you make it more visual? I knew that if I stayed very close to the book and respected the book and, and embodied the book, that I would win them over. We talked to Stephanie a lot, tried to like get inside her head, fill in some of the gaps that we didn't know. I didn't mind things changing in the movie, because obviously that's part of the process, but I just wanted things, everything that happened to be something that could have happened in Twilight. Stephanie wrote such a cool book, and I wanted to um, just make that real, make it visual, make it exciting, lift it off the page from words into just a thrilling experience that you felt like you were there. And then I thought Alice just comes up, and rips <laughs> off the head and <laughs> Yeah. That would be cool. It's I like having Alice involved in that. Before I had even dreamed of publishing, I was casting the parts in my head. And the Summit has done a great job with the casting and getting characters that I'm so excited about. Seeing these people, I have a lot of faith that they're gonna be able to bring them to life. Cool, just like that, yeah, hold that. When we started to work with Summit, I was really excited. They were so into the characters and so willing to sort of negotiate with me. I, I had a lot of things I wanted to protect. Wardrobe. A lot of people immediately think, because you're dealing with vampires, we are talking about, you know, floor-length leather dusters and black and chokers and whatnot. And I knew that was going to be a temptation. Catherine was able to go in there and say, no, 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 no. You know, we're talking about light colors and classic designers, things like that. It was super intense. Uh, we had to do all the wigs and hair and makeup on all the actors. But it was fun. <laughs> I think everybody looks good, and I got all their pictures right in here. I brought cool photos to show you guys. Yeah, that is oh fabulous. When I went to Stephanie Meyer's book signing, I saw that there was every kind of person there. Every color, size, shape, age were all there into her books. And so I thought it would be exciting if this movie represented her readers and her audience and the diverse, you know, beautiful people that read her book. So we're having a casting call for Twilight here. We were looking for, you know, a wide variety of extras, background, featured extras, stand-ins, photo doubles for the cast. 
Uh, it's very important to Catherine, the director, that we have a lot of locals give everybody the opportunity. It's an exciting project to be shooting here. Yeah. Woo! They were lining up today starting at like 9 in the morning. Yeah! Uh, looking for a wide variety of people that want to have the opportunity to be in Twilight. Okay, rehearsing and action. Come on. Stay there. I Smile. I can't believe you're making me do this. Smile. <laughs> people that are just doing everything they can for this thing. My experience with Catherine has been wonderful. I have this sense that she really has my back on this. And they arrived, yes! She has kept the vision of the book and she has kept, I think, everything in line with that. Visual effects are in here. Catherine was really great about just sort of cutting it really fast and wanting to get in it and see, see temp versions of a lot of the shots so she could see what the film looked like. Right from the beginning, we, we work with conceptual development to come up with some concepts of previs. What we did is we actually went and modeled the environments as well as the characters in 3D. So it was sort of like a, looks like a video game sort of mock-up, and we actually animate the characters. And is that the, the restaurant there, That's, the waterfall? Yeah. It looks really good already, just in the rough shots. It looks amazing. The process of putting the book into a movie has been really exciting. It's also um, a little frightening for me. You know, this is my baby. <laughs> the barometer that I've used uh, are the Stephanie Meyer visits. Yeah, right. I like that. It's it's good like and the fact that she is so thrilled with everything she's seen, that's the strongest vote of confidence, the feeling that we're doing the right thing and delivering to her audience what she so effectively delivered in book form. Is this what you picture? This looks just right. And it has that unreal feeling. It's so unusual. Say it. Vampire. I could tell from how open they were that they wanted to do the movie the same way I wanted the movie to be done. And it's been a really great experience on that level. Well, the Collins have a lot of things in common, things that they agree on, but they're very, very different, and they've kind of come together each for their own reasons. You have Carlisle, <laughs> sort of the, the rock of the family, who's just a great person. As a vampire, he has pure compassion for everyone. And then Esme, of course, they're a family because she loves everyone so much. All that warmth and all her love and all her passion when she became a vampire just became even more palpable and, and potent. <laughs> then you have Rosalie, who doesn't like what she is, but she's going to be better than anyone else anyway, because that's what she does. <laughs> and Emmett, who just is along for the ride, enjoys anything that life throws at him. So if he's going to be a vampire, OK. He's going to have fun with it. There are a few characters that have abilities beyond the normal strength and speed and agility that the vampires have. For the most part, it's mental abilities. It's not so much, you know, shooting fireballs out of your hand, but it's the ability to have extra perceptions that other people don't have. I'm Alice. Oh, I wish she was real. I would love to have a best friend like that. She brought with her premonitions uh, so she can see the future, which is awesome. She uses it to help save her brother's love <laughs> and to, to help the family. If you had an Alice, you had to have a Jasper because she needed someone special and different to complete who she was. Jasper's ability is to calm, especially when you have a house full of vampires that are trying not to eat humans and they're going to school with humans. It can raise a lot of those animalistic tendencies. And so what Jasper's ability is, is to calm that. It all sort of came together like this is how it was supposed to be. Who's he? Oh, Edward. <laughs> Edward can actually read people's thoughts as a vampire. I'm just fascinated with him as a character because he doesn't see how special he is. He thinks of himself as this horrible monster, and yet he is beautiful, and he is interesting and intelligent and brilliant. He was turned into a vampire by uh, Carlisle, who he's now kind of adopted as his father. He doesn't see what the point of his life is at all in, in this vampire state. Dr. Carlisle, it's hard you know, for him, because he's changed these, these people into vampires, but he's done it in a way where it was in a way to save them. 
Carlyle still thinks that uh, even if you're turned into a vampire, you still essentially have a soul, which is against the general myth of what a vampire is supposed to do. And so you can still have some kind of enlightened existence. Who are you? The group that James travels with, they're more eclectic than the Colons. I don't really think of them as bad vampires. I think of them as your average vampire. They don't think anything of killing a human because that's how they live. We thirst for human blood. That's what we have to eat in order to survive. Whereas the Cullens are slightly more evolved, they've learned how to sustain themselves off of animals, which pretty much makes them vegetarians. We're not vegetarians, we're carnivores. And there are permanent residents where we just, we just go all over the world and wherever we need to go. <laughs> The nomadic vampires are frustrated by the Cullens because they're not embracing who and what they are, they're abstaining. Here is this group of vampires who are maintaining these, these human confines, these mortal societal rules, and it's very strange to the three of us. We'll go now, James. It's the very simple notion of treating vampirism as a blessing versus a curse. The Cullens are treating it as a curse uh, but one that they've learned to manage. And if they live in a group where they can sort of monitor one another, there's a way that they can do it and do it well. We're so much stronger than them because we choose not to be that. And because we choose not to be that, then we almost become human beings that are immortal. We do go against the grain. We've really learned to subdue our hunger. We're kind of the, uh, <laughs> the freaks of the vampire world, if you will. Every other vampire in the world is looking at us like we're trying to be something that we're not, that we're fighting something. And I think in a lot of ways it's true. Whether you want to be rebellious or whether you want to conform, I think it all really boils down to choices. And every teenager goes to these choices and where they want their lives to end up. The idea of these creatures who are so strong and so powerful and yet try so hard to be good when they really don't have to. And I think that appeals to a lot of young people. You can be whatever you want. No matter what stereotype you fit into, you don't have to go by those rules. school parking lot we have the first day of school where Bella is timid she's kind of embarrassed shy just like anybody would be if you were coming to a new school on your first day in the middle of the semester and she's got this crazy truck that doesn't fit in with like the cool car it's this crazy like early 60s truck that backfires when she parks <laughs> Bella is a shy person, she's just mortified. So that was an, a fun scene for us because it really sets the tone. Nice ride. <laughs> Everybody notices her and she just kind of slinks away and suddenly up comes Eric who wants to, you know, give her the tour and put her in the newspaper. And she's just kind of like overwhelmed with all this like unwanted attention. I'm on the paper in your news baby front page. Oh no, I'm not. Actually, if you couldn't do that, whoa, it'd be whoa, better. Whoa, okay, uh, chillax. Uh, no feature. Everybody is interested in Bella. So I think that's the reason why I go in for the, you know, attack first because I feel if I'm the first one, then maybe she might just like cling to me. And we cut there. Check the gate. The gate's good. We're moving to the gym. Welcome to Forks High School. We're doing the volleyball scene where Bella shows that she is not the most coordinated kid on the planet. Hey, Mark. Action. Bella's completely uncoordinated, and she's forced to play volleyball. An excruciating experience for anybody who can't play volleyball with a whole bunch of girls who can. And she gets to meet Mike. Hey, I'm Mike Welch, playing Mike Newton, and uh, this is my establishing scene in the movie on the basketball court here. Bella is about to uh, get me in the head with a volleyball, so yeah, it'll be fun. Action! Oh! 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 oh. oh. Try it again, try it again. I think that the main challenge about it is just not to anticipate, you know, what's what's coming. Um, because when you when you, you know, get beamed in the head, 
uh, and they say action, and you know it's coming. It's it's hard not to kind of flinch. Um, but the volley, it, you know, it didn't hurt that bad. I mean, it's a volleyball. You know, it's 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 fine. Mike, stand still, buddy. Elliot, yeah. And action. Whoa! God, I'm sorry. Oh. I told them that they should not let me play. <laughs> That's fine. You're you're uh, you're Isabella, right? So, Mike, what's your yeah. approach? My appro I don't know, man. I'm just trying to figure this girl out. You know, she's uh, she's got those got those eyes. I think she just yeah. intrigues me. Oh yeah, me. and just yeah, her physique is just phenomenal. Ooh, phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to compete. You know, I I don't really have as big of arms as you know, like it, that. Yeah. It's I'm just trying to grade. send her mixed signals. That's my approach. You know, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but she has to catch like, <laughs> what, is that? What, what, is this? what is this? That's the stud move, yeah, you know what I mean? What is this? Yeah, they wanted Eric in the scene for basketball, but like, could you see this guy like <laughs> dribbling yeah, up? Yeah, right? Hey, <laughs> you don't know my skills. <laughs> and action! We shot a scene today where Edward comes in and saves Bella from getting crushed by a van, and it's inexplicable. She's been thinking about this guy for the last couple weeks anyway, but now it becomes a completely different thing. The van crash scene is one of the most pivotal scenes in the book. You want to get in and get the intimacy kit shot. You had to get that amazing connection where Bella is really realizing he did something extraordinary. She sees that it's not just superhuman feelings that she feels for him. He really is not human. Edward puts his hand out to stop the door, so to make that impact we had this soft flexible molded door that he could stop it and you know make that cool effect Bella you okay you and I are gonna talk all right I'm fine dad calm down Today we're shooting the hospital scene at Forks Hospital right after Bella gets in the car accident and gets knocked down and so she's kind of disoriented and she's suspecting that something is pretty strange and up with Edward and even now she realizes Dr. Cullen's in on it too. Okay, good. I'm about to do it for real. Let's go. Action. It was amazing. He, he got over to me so fast he was nowhere near me. It sounds like you were a very lucky girl. Okay. So, if this job doesn't work out, I'm planning on a new career. Future nurse? Special effects with the fishing rod, the apple. I was trying to think of how to make that scene in the cafeteria more interesting and come alive. And so I thought, uh, okay, a salad bar is kind of cool. You can be on different sides. There's just beautiful colors and everything. That's kind of how I got the idea. And then I thought, wow, maybe she could have an apple. Oh, my God. Let's just go for it and let's just do the book cover. And maybe it's cool or not cool, but I want to at least try it. Edible art? <laughs> try it one more time. Edible art? <laughs> one more time, sir, one more time. Edible art. This is really hard to do. Okay. Edible art. Edible art. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> After we did it like a million times trying to get it right, I was about to give up, but finally take 13 actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and cut. Perfect. Got it. Great. Cut. I do kind of like it because if you know the book cover, you've got it for like one eighth of a second in there. We were all looking so forward to going to La Push Beach because we thought this is the one time there's no vampires, the sun would come out and it can be just beautiful. Then you get to the beach and it's extreme weather conditions. We are on a very wet, cold beach. We're filming the beach scene where uh, Jacob breaks the treaty. What did your friends mean about, you know, the Cullens don't come here? Definitely the most difficult part of this is the climate. We're here, pouring out. We've got a tsunami, but we're still filming. You better go ask the actors that question. Uh, we're getting pneumonia, is what we're doing. <laughs> That's why we moved the second scene up into these vans. We love our job. It's glamorous. We don't know what to do, but we're making a new idea here. <laughs> we have everybody in the 
bands because they don't want to get out and get wet. So that's a new scene we're coming up with. I started going around to these surfers, hey, can we borrow your van, can we borrow your van? And we had the actors sitting in the van so they wouldn't be quite so freezing. I mean, this is quite a wet day. We suffer for the enjoyment of others. Here we go, shooting now. Hey, Mark. Bella. Hi, this is Jacob. Hey, guys. What's up? Yeah, the scene's going very good. Um, we've met our two other wolf pack people, and um, oh, yeah. boy, are they interested. <laughs> so we shot the scene on the beach, which was a really crazy day, and we wanted to make that scene more visual and more alive. So what we're doing is we're showing the story visually instead of just having Jacob tell it. So this is a flashback scene. You'll love it. And it's all gonna be sepia for the flashbacks. It's gonna look cool, especially in this period outfit. And we all look stylish. It starts off in the woods. We're uh, tracking a deer. I pounce on it. And they're just about to eat when all of a sudden the Quillia uh, warriors come up and catch them on their land. Action! It's on. They're about to like come after us. And they're like, what are you doing on our property, dude? And. Uh, I say something like, slow your roll, and then we end up uh, living in peace and signing a contract. We're not allowed on their land anymore, so we go hunting elsewhere. So. Clearing back and bringing in the wolves. So one of the favorite things about the book is that Jacob's tribe, the Quillutes, are descended from wolves. So instead of just hearing that, we kind of wanted to see it. We'll take a little misty foreground. Roll when you've got an image. The wolves are such a big part of the next several books. So we got our cool real wolves here today. Ron Stay. Sarah? Their name like Ricky, Randy, Tom, Sarah. <laughs> So what we're about to film is a scene where uh, the three of us find our next victim. And pick up some of his clothes that we, uh, we fancy, his coat in particular for me. We taunt a little and then we come in and thieve and devour. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we killing some people today. And action! Oh. Can we cut? I know what you are. I don't want you to say it out loud. Yeah, this is the scene which uh, Bella tells me that she's found out that I'm a vampire. I want to tell him because he's been keeping me so in the dark. This scene is going to be pretty good. What? A marker. Action. See it. Vampire. Are you afraid? No. I admit to have it as the truth. And I try and it's my kind of final attempt to scare her away from me, leading up to the big scene in the meadow. Where are we going? Cut. Woo! That was great. Yeah. We did great, I think. <laughs> Today we're shooting a scene that we wanted to do in Portland, but we are now recreating it on the golf course here in Los Angeles, Griffith Park. We've made it back into like the meadow, we've added like moss and wildflowers because we never got to shoot really a meadow scene where Edward sparkles in the meadow. In post-production, by special effects, ILM, they will add the sparkle, but today we're going to show the sun hitting Edward's face. Action! Sun! And crane! Cut! Cut! Good one, good huh? One. Yeah. Cut, cut! <laughs> <laughs> I am here to do my my big 
cameo. This is my break into the movie industry. It's gonna be the best extra ever. I really wanted Stephanie Meyer to be in the movie because it's her baby. This all came out of her. How do you feel, Stephanie? <laughs> Nervous. We had the idea that she would be on her laptop writing Breaking Dawn <laughs> in the scene. And she said, now be sure that you can't read anything on my computer in the scene because people will probably take it with a microscope, you know, zoom in on it and try to figure out what I was writing, you know. Five, six. They wanted to give me lines, actually, but I so don't want to screw this movie up just by being in it, so I'm hoping to maintain a very low profile. Background and action. I can't get over how grown up you are. And so gorgeous. Thank you. All right, that was excellent, you guys. I think she's awesome, and she looks so good, and she's got her vampire blood red shirt on, you know. And action! I have had to fight our kind before. We are difficult to kill, but not impossible. We'll rip them apart with our hands and then burn the pieces. I shouldn't relish the thought of killing another creature, even a sadistic one like James. Well, in this scene, we're making our... Uh escape from the bad vampires and getting little Bella off to safety. We played baseball and this dummy here brought Bella and so the bad vampires are trying to kill her and so we kind of all rush back here with our amazing cars. Pack everything up, it's kind of a big flurry, we're all over the place. Of course, I don't want to be a part of anything because I'm just like Miss Reluctant, so. And I'm just falling apart. They take Bella away from me, it's the first time we get split up. I'll keep her safe, Edward. Edward obviously wants to stay with Bella, and we kind of all come together and, and realize that she can't stay with Edward. It's not safe. Of course, I'm like, I'll take Bella. I'll go with her. I'll keep her safe. I can see the future. We conjure up a plan and basically convince Edward to separate from Bella, and we whisk her away. So today we're filming the final hospital scene, you know, where Bella has just come out of her trance and she doesn't know if she's alive, dead, a vampire, a human. She has no idea where she is, so we're right now doing a shot where we're starting out of focus and she finally focuses in on her mom. Right into the lens. Hey, Mark. Her mother's there, so I'm I'm pretending to be sleeping in, until I can see what her uh, situation is, and uh, when's the kind of big reconciliation between the two characters? I'm right here. Beautiful. Um, Alice lent me the dress. The cast is... You look perfect. Tonight, Bella's going off to the prom. And Charlie, despite all his misgivings about Edward and the uh, Cullen family and all that she's been through, he's got to let her go. I'm gonna take good care of it, Chief Swan. Yeah, I've heard that before. It's a bit difficult for him, but uh, I'm trying to do it with a smile. You look beautiful. Thanks. Right, you guys. Okay, I'll check the gate. Right now, we are filming the beginning of the prom scene. Jacob sneaks out of the forest, and he is delivering a message to Bella from Billy Black. When we put the whole movie together, we realized that you were really kind of missing Jacob at the end. So we filmed kind of a short scene, but it's important because you still get that taste. You get that rivalry going between him and Edward and kind of like helps us get into the next books. Jacob got to get dressed up, wear his nice clothes, best as he could. He dug in the closet and like, you know, found some of his grandfather's stuff. But but uh, this is Jacob's dressed up uh, prom do. The only girl I'm interested in is already taken. He sees Bella pull up with some blood sucking leech named is it Edward. And when Edward moves away, Jacob sneaks in for the kill. Jacob, I'll take it from here. 
guess I'll see you around, Bella. shaking at all times. So you never know when the camera's on you. So tonight we're trying to do um, our final scene in the movie at the prom where Edward and Bella are out in this kind of cool gazebo with all these different lights and we're on a turntable and they're dancing and Bella asks him uh, to turn her into a vampire. So we're going to see if that happens tonight. <laughs> we're not sure yet. It's two o'clock in the morning or <laughs> whatever. It's freezing cold. <laughs> it's raining. Hey, yeah. It's going cold. Yeah. <laughs> really cold. <laughs> many, many problems. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rob fell? No, I didn't see Rob fall. I wish I did. Hey, Mark. Action. Shall we? You're serious. She has a broken leg, so I manipulate her into dancing, um, like making her stand on my feet. Edward, why did you save me? You just let the venom spread. I could be like you right now. For me, it's like last-ditch effort to sort of communicate, like, desperately that I need to live forever because you're going to live forever. And it seems like he's, like, letting it all slip through the cracks. Is it not enough just to have a long and happy life with me? For now. the book I thought oh man a vampire baseball scene I've never seen it but that sounds fun to film we have some some clouds out today so uh, we're very fortunate to be able to film on a vampire film if there's sun it's not good I have to go to cover sets which is kind of backwards because usually on films when it's cloudy you go to cover sets but uh, not not in a vampire movie <laughs> okay let's do it what are we doing we're out here at the baseball field and we've got a pretty cool scene where the Cullens actually get to cut loose and have fun, come out and play baseball whenever it's thunderstorm and rainy. I mean, I haven't played baseball in like five years, so it's good, it's fun to get back into it. And swing! Yeah, I get to play a little bit. It's uh, all acting is, is playing, really. Well, I get to be the pitcher, which is awesome. Uh, took like two weeks to get me to even know how to pitch. Ashley Green learned to pitch. She'd never thrown a baseball, and we worked with her so that she really could, you know, look amazing. And Andy Chang shot her in a particular way that makes it look like, holy cow, sign her up for the major leagues. Catherine's really big on shooting low-res reference and a lot of her rehearsal sessions. They'd run through a few scenes with the actors if they're there, or even some stand-ins if the actors weren't there, and um, cut uh, some of those together. <laughs> And that was great for us because we would get to be able to see as visual effects, we'd be able to see um, what the plan was early on and very visually see what that plan is. It's time.
it's a fun scene. It's a lot of technical stuff, a lot of stunts and sort of crazy stuff that I don't understand how it works. Who's got plastic balls? Raise your hand. Not everybody's a perfect pitcher, so to be able to like manipulate the balls later on in post, our special effects supervisor, Richard Kidd, said, let's put a clear plastic Christmas ornament in everybody's hand, then we'll replace it later in post. The balls have to be moving at vampire speed. You've got to be catching them without gloves on. Um, we're going to put them in in CG. Well, to be able to do that is we need to make sure that when you go to catch, you don't end up with a hand like this. It's going to be real hard to catch it right the size. So our first takes, you would see people catching like plastic balls so that he could track in a CGI ball and replace it. You're out. We have people sliding on the second base home. And we have a... Lexan base with silicone spray with a shuffleboard wax, and then we're going to dress it with some sand and uh, see how far we can get him to slide. So I'll take off right here. I'm going to slide that far. You hit it hard. I feel like a bowling ball. Great, here we go. Ready? Action, Peter. Safe. I don't need a shower tonight. See how things work out. A lot of this stuff, because Dr. Cullen's so refined and proper, he, does, he doesn't let loose that often, so a lot of the stunts are left to the youngins. This is the stunt where I actually catch Jasper's almost home run. Run to the woods, climb a tree, jump 50 feet up into the air, catch a left-handed, land, he's out, throw it back to Alice. I'm laughing because I'm hurting so bad. It hurts so bad. Make it go away. I'm gonna... <laughs> the running thing was just extraordinarily painful. Two, one, action! I mean, you do one or two takes and it's just having your entire weight put on like the edge of a nylon strap. <laughs> just again and again and again. I mean, it's horrible. I think I've got like, uh, I've got scars. Hopefully I'll never do that ever again in my life. <laughs> Trying to have an entire sequence shot over five days uh, means you have to have try to con try to have consistent weather over the course of those five days. Which has been very challenging because we've had hail and rain and it's been freezing and we're in the middle of these gorgeous mountains and there's waterfalls everywhere and it's there's wigs and people getting rained on and contact lenses breaking and, and just... <laughs> Total insanity. Just a little bit of wetness, we're all good. Here we go. And set and action. I believe this belongs to you. Thank you. I am Laurent. And this is Victoria. And James. And this is the big scene yeah. where the vampire the nomadic vampires come and meet the Cullen family, and there's a whole face-off. I should never have brought you here. I'm so sorry. Here we go! And action! Today we're, we're testing out a, uh, well, a gag called the Margic. Uh, Margic? <laughs> Close, but he meant to say the Magic Carpet. My favorite stunt so far is actually called the Magic Carpet. And it's basically a long plexiglass walkway that is pulled by a winch. So when we're walking on it, it really looks like we're walking 20 miles an hour. Three, two, well, one, action. We're toning them like really fast. If they fall oh, yeah. off, it's very dangerous. If you end up in your peripheral vision catching the ground that isn't moving, it, it makes you like want to fall down. You just have no sense of balance or gravity or anything. It's amazing. It's really the coolest thing in the world. Somewhere you'll see people who look kind of like us in the same costume, and those are the stunt people they're not using because we can do it. We got <laughs> skills, <laughs> baby. OK, here we go. Stop, stand by. You don't even have a shot. OK. Roll right. OK. Three. 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 Kevin! Action. Beautiful!
info. I've done some stunt work before, but nothing like this. Nothing like this. I can see the game is over. We'll go now. Tell Edward how much it hurts. Tell him to avenge him. Tell him. Oh, Edward, don't! Tell him. I'm really excited to see the fight sequence. It's a lot more involved than I wrote it, which is exciting to me because there's some things that you're limited in when you're working in print and things that you can only do visually. I kept reading the scene several times because I really wanted to see how do you kill a vampire? What are the exact details? How did the action go down? And I thought, let's really see it. Let's get into the action. Let's make it visceral. Let's make it really alive. <laughs> Ready and action. It's the venom. <laughs> Make a choice, you can let the change happen. I realized a lot of it in the book, it's told in a minimal fashion, and we kind of cut away from it because Bella has this venom possessing her body and loss of blood, so she's woozy and she misses certain action beats. Immediately, my mind started going into like cool stuff we could do in this ballet studio and how to make the ballet studio interesting. So I had an illustrator do some sketches for me of some of these ideas. And then when Andy Chang came in, I showed him all these images. Andy got excited, like when I showed him this drawing and this, let's try this, we could do this with wires, we could do this rig. And then Andy would go and do some of these scenes with the stunt guys. Here's something, he cut that piece together and you keep kind of honing it down, refining, refining the beats until the actual day you're shooting. And action! We decided to shoot the ballet sequence first because there was an idea that we might use some of that sequence for marketing and we need to get a jump on the visual effects. And then our actor, Cam Gigande, actually had another job right after that, so we had to compress all his work days into the beginning. I think it was very difficult for the actors because we hadn't had time to really organically develop the characters except in rehearsal. So on Kristen's first day, she had to walk into the ballet studio and confront the painful memories of her past and find out that, boom, her mother's not even there. Instead, there's James, the most powerful vampire, and she's probably gonna die. I didn't realize until I started the movie what I was getting myself into. So the ballet studio, we have four days to shoot this, the first unit, four days the second unit, and we have to keep in our minds the continuity, because we get to shoot the part with the real actors, and then we have to cut away. The second unit, after we finish, has to shoot the insert parts, and then we do the aftermath. So we're like literally changing pieces of walls. Any movie of this scale is going to have a massive amount of deliberation when it comes to having like a clear, direct line that everybody's going down. And if you're not going down the same line, you're just going to have a scattered version of a story that just doesn't come across. I mean, it was such a short period of time. It's strange because it's so brief, the scene, and yet you have to kind of get so much into it. It was very grueling that first week. You had to have about a million thoughts in your head at the same time and, and also be tugged around on a wire everywhere. Three, two, one, action! We are filming one of the stunts right now, and it's the big ultimate Three, climax two, of the movie. One, and uh, we're rehearsing right now. And that's what it looks like. This is James when he gets torn apart by the Cullen family and thrown into the fire. We've rigged this dummy with breakaway arms and heads. You can rip these arms off and then you can put them right back together for take two. I am James. I am going to die in the fire. It's fun to play a vampire, I gotta say. In the ballet studio, we save the day, we get to jump down off the balcony, do some cool wire work. It's amazing, I've never been on wires, and you get to jump off a balcony 20 times and not die, <laughs> you know? I do most of the programming for all the moves uh, that are computer-operated on the winches. 
Right, anything that's a little bit more complex move, we basically put a large a weight on that's roughly the weight of the actor, um, fly that around first. So um, if things don't behave exactly as we expect them to, we get to see them with the weight bag instead of a person. Action! It's a lot out of your hands. You're really kind of trusting other people, but it's it's a blast, yeah. Cam Gigande is incredibly, you know, physical and really knows how to do a lot of stuff. Did a lot of his own fighting in his last movie, so he was really comfortable getting on the rigs and fighting and holds himself well in the air. The fight training that I did on Never Back Down, it helps a lot with the just the fundamentals and being able to have the coordination to figure things out quicker than I normally would. Cam is every day saying, tell Summit to let me do my stunts. <laughs> but I saw a stunt double do some of the stunts, and the guy did get a little bit cut up. I'm like, oh, Cam, no, not cutting no, your no. pretty face, honey. <laughs> The suicide dive bomb was one of my first ideas. I thought that at one point Edward would get so furious, his animal nature would take over and he would just dive down from the window and just plow right through the floorboards. So how do you do that? The wooden floor, we build the stage. The whole ballet set is building a stage about, about, about the ground like a foot high. Um, of course, you have like breakaway wood, like balsa wood strips, uh, planks that are pre-scored underneath so that they will break at points. But it's still real wood, and it's a guy's head hitting real wood, so it's dangerous, you know. And in fact, I think our guy got a concussion, but he was back at work the next day, and he said, "Hey, man, I'm a stunt dude." I'm Colin. I'm that James stunt double, and uh, what we're setting up for is this part in the shot where James is sitting there and he just broke Bella's leg. And, uh, and he's telling, telling her to say, hey, you know, tell Edward to avenge you and tell him how much it hurts. Amazingly enough, for this broken leg, we're using the wooden splinter look. Yeah, very nice, but we get to put it over, add some blood, and there is your broken leg. Ow! Yeah, it's a good day today. Two, one, action! <laughs> That's the fun part, you know, to get, if you can take the time and do those, you know, gags right uh, and have your actors in them, you know, it just looks great on screen. It's a breakaway window, uh, mostly balsa wood, uh, very few screws to not hurt the stuntman. Uh, got candy glass in it. Uh, we're going to have, I believe, three cameras rolling on this all at once. And um, pretty much it's going to be a big bang. <laughs> Everything was practical because a green screen gives a sense of unreality and you're always working later on to make it not look like green screen. Whereas if you just do it for real, if you can, it's going to look better. It's sort of like a three-act structure where actually the first third is writing the script, the next is production, and post-production is the third act. In the post, you choose, like, this is the coolest angle for the floor break sequence. And here's the best way we can cut it together. You double check all the takes. Beautiful. Very visually dynamic. Nancy and I go through and we see, would this work? Can we have one less shot here? Could we have one more shot here? So that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to see if we can, uh, like, smooth out one little section of a car chase. I also have the, you know, the whole uh, storyboards. Also different scenes that we know we want to add rain, like it wasn't raining in this shot, so I'll just like colored pencil and I need rain here. The 
the baseball sequence, again, that's sort of uh, incorporating a, a lot of the work that we did. We actually did a big gigapixel image of the field, which is basically tiling together hundreds, if not thousands, of pictures to get one extremely large resolution image that's a big 360 of the entire baseball sequence. That way later, if we did want to shoot some inserts, we would be able to go back to the still imagery and we'd be able to zoom in on them as much as we wanted and, and, and use those as our back plates. We had just a number of shots through the opening sequence. We had um, a deer sort of jumping into uh, white light and Edward swoops across the frame to tackle the deer. And, and of course we couldn't do that for real, so we did that in, in visual effects. Vampires don't fly in Stephanie's world, but they can run and jump much faster than we can. <laughs> In the wide shot where we actually see them jump out of the house into the first tree, the tree wasn't quite close enough. It didn't look like a, a good enough landing spot. So we actually moved the trees over into the middle of the frame. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> There's a variety of work all through that whole sequence as far as not only doing the wire removal, they were wearing tight clothing, so we have to replace where there's harnesses and things that are underneath the clothing. We do a lot of cleanup. People ask, how did you guys do that helicopter shot? Did you CGI the people in? No, those are stunt doubles harnessed into the top while the helicopter came very close to them and they actually thought that they were gonna be washed away by the wind because it was so scary. We really wanted to do the movie for real, the action for real. No green screen is used in this movie. We could do some stuff in camera and then the stuff that we didn't do in camera, just sort of hiding stuff, invisible effects. We actually did a lot of adding um, some greenery, a lot of ferns down below, adding storm clouds, lightning, to add some rain into shots that weren't raining. There's not a lot of in-your-face traditional vampire effects. Um, it's, it's more of just sort of putting them in the scene, putting them in the mood, helping the mood of the scene. Stephanie gave us a very tough trick. In the book, she said, has, it looks like embedded diamonds on his face, but his skin is also smooth as marble. That was the biggest visual challenge in this film. And we worked on that um, the, entire, the entire project, and then we were lucky enough to get ILM to come on and work on that effect. They did a fantastic job. You're beautiful. Beautiful. This is the skin of a killer, Bill. You wanna go see some music? I just got back from London and we were at the incredible Air Lynnhurst Studios and that's where Carter Burwell was recording the whole score for the movie. We had several themes, like we had what we kind of call like a predator theme or like the skin of a killer. That's kind of Edward's theme that you hear and you hear that at the beginning of the movie and it weaves through that it, you really feel that tension and that danger and that inner conflict. Cool. Very nice. Party! <laughs> Today we're at Wildfire Studios and we are doing the final mix for the movie. So this is kind of like the little magic place where you, you bring it all together. Uh, that, that felt pretty good. Maybe we could hear it. Right? Okay. We're just trying to get all the levels right, like, you know, the sound, the music, the sound effects, the dialogue, so that you feel all the feelings that you're supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. 